Now the process of digestion is completed in small intestine. Now once the process is completed, once the process of digestion is completed in small intestine, you can see the larger complex molecules are converted into simple molecules. Carbohydrates, when we are taking carbohydrates, they are in the form of starches. Polysaccharides in the form of starch. Now polysaccharides are converted into glucose, galactose, fructose, monosaccharides. Likewise, proteins are converted into amino acids. The complex proteins are converted into amino acids. Fats. The fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol. Nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, are converted into simple sugars, nitrogen bases, phosphates. So all the complex substances are broken down into simple substances. The process of digestion is completed. Now, the movement of food, the, the movement of food is called as peristalsis. After we take the food into the mouth, after mechanical digestion inside the mouth, the food bolus is formed and food bolus undergoes deglutition. Skeletal muscles are present in the wall of mouth and buccal cavity and pharynx. Buccal cavity and pharynx. So we swallow the food into esophagus. But in esophagus, the food has to move forward. So that food has to move forward in the wall, in the cavity of esophagus, stomach and intestine. The smooth muscles present inside the wall will have to undergo wave-like contraction. That wave-like contraction in the wall of esophagus and stomach is called as peristalsis. The peristalsis helps in movement of food one. It is also helping in mechanical digestion. Particularly in the stomach, it helps in churning movements. Longitudinal, circular, oblique muscles, all muscles are present. Of course, they are all smooth muscles, involuntary in action. So when they are contracting, mechanical digestion is occurring. So they are, the, the muscles present inside the wall of the gut help in peristalsis. And they are also useful for mechanical digestion, partial. But then, the food is not continuing to move from esophagus up to rectum at the same pace. So from, after the food has entered into esophagus, the food after it has entered into esophagus, it will quickly in less than, in around 10 seconds time, it will reach the stomach. But there are sphincters, see, the food that is entering into stomach, so it is not allowed to go back, we got cardiac sphincter. And it stays there for a considerable period of time. So that means sphincters, there are muscles, cardiac sphincter, pyloric sphincters, they are closed, allowing the food to stay inside the stomach. So that means sphincters regulate the food from coming into stomach and leaving the stomach. Cardiac sphincter prevents regurgitation. But the pyloric stomach, it is regulating a small quantities of food to enter from stomach into intestine. And see the difference between the cardiac and pyloric sphincters. Pylo cardiac sphincter prevents regurgitation into esophagus. But the pyloric sphincter regulates only small quantities to enter into intestine. The intestine cannot take food, a huge quantity of food at a time like is in stomach. Stomach is a sac-like structure, so it can store good enough of food, large amount of food at a time. But intestine is narrow, so only small quantities will enter. So that means sphincters are opening and closing, muscles are contracting. So this is done in a coordinate, coordinated fashion to help the food from moving further forwards. And this total activity of digestion is controlled by two, is controlled by autonomous nervous system. Autonomous nervous system is a self-governing nervous system controlled by diencephalon. So diencephalon 
controls autonomous nerve activity. Autonomous nerve activity includes the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Now, the foot to move, that means to peristalsis. So, increase in peristalsis. Parasympathetic nerves are stimulated. Increase peristalsis. Opening of sphincters. When sympathetic nerves are stimulated, peristalsis stops. Sphincters are closed. See, in emergency condition, sympathetic nerves are stimulated. Under that emergency condition, total digestive process stops. Movement of gut stops. That means peristalsis stops. Sphincters are closed. That means total digestive process is stopped. That is when sympathetic nerves are stimulated. But when parasympathetic nerves are stimulated, now the emergency activity is not there forever. It is there for certain period of time. After certain period of time, now person comes back to normalcy. Rest and digestion process. So to bring back that emergency conditions to normalcy, parasympathetic nerves are stimulated. Sphincters are open. And sphincters are open, food is moving further forwards into next areas. Peristalsis increases, gut secretions increased. Sympathetic nerves, gut secretions stops. In case of parasympathetic nerves, gut secretions increased. So they have got opposite functions. Emergency conditions, sympathetic nerves are stimulated. You can see sphincters are closed, peristalsis stops, gut secretion stops. When the person is under resting condition, that emergency conditions are gone, resting condition, rest and digest process is occurring. You can see there is opening of sphincters, there is increased peristalsis, Increased gut secretions. When I say secretions, it refers to secretion of all glands.